right, Manchester United will kick off the Premier League season against Fulham at Old Trafford. Peter Stevenson uh, is there for us now. A very good morning to you, Peter. And a very good morning to you, Rob. It's uh, a grey old day at Old Trafford, but yeah, you're right. This is where the new Premier League season will kick off, that Friday night fixture after, no doubt, a really busy summer of rebuilding work both on and off the pitch. Uh, Adam Stott from uh, Forever United TV is with me just to reflect a little bit. Friday night football at Old Trafford, a chance to go top of the league, early doors. That's it. Uh, <laughs> some, would, some would say that's probably our, our best chance of being top of the league or that moment in the season, first game of the season, Friday night, floodlights on at Old Trafford and everyone waiting to see how this new look Ineos slash Ten Hag team is going to set up and who's actually going to be on the pitch really more than anything else. When I look at the first six fixtures, Fulham, Brighton, Liverpool stands out but Southampton, Palace, Spurs, not a bad start. Not difficult you would say on paper but last season United were getting beat at home by Bournemouth, Fulham, uh, Crystal Palace so we know the Premier League everyone's going to be improving you can't stand still in the Premier League difficult games every single week uh, and yeah difficult away games to start off a lot of travelling for the away fans first off some uh, thousand, pl thousand plus miles in there for them uh, Liverpool stands out obviously early this season obviously it was a big game for Manchester United here last season in many ways I think we can claim that we pretty much ruined Liverpool's season or was the start of it in beating Liverpool here in the FA Cup and then taking points off them in the league. But that is the one fixture that stands out. Uh, three of the uh, top five from last season, the first seven fixtures. So a bit of a mixed bag, really. Uh, interesting start. And I can't say if it's hard or if it's an easy start, probably somewhere in the middle. And it's, it's going to be one of those seasons, isn't it? I mean, there'll be a lot of attention on United because of the manager, because of the, new, you know, the relatively new owners. In terms of also playing Thursday, Sunday. Yeah, Europa League, obviously after beating City in the FA Cup final. So Thursday, Sunday, difficult to manage. We've seen it with many managers. You only have to look at Aston Villa going well last season, right until the end, then tiredness kicks in, fatigue. Ten Hag not known to mix his squad up a lot, but maybe he's learnt from previous seasons, uh, bad season in the Champions League last season. He really can't afford a poor start to the season because everybody's looking at him. A lot of people with the opinion that he was slightly lucky to get the job. Obviously, he's come out and said that Ineos has spoke to him and he was the best that was available with everything and all the discussions and review going on at the end of the season. So I think all eyes are on United, all eyes are on Ten Hag. The players, that's another interesting one with transfers, ins and outs, who's going to be expect, lining up. Do you expect a lot of business in that? Yeah, I do. I think every United fan does deserve. A lot of people that have said, look, we've backed the manager. He's now in. It's probably going to be the longest serving manager post for Alex Ferguson if all goes well this season for Ten Hag. It's now time to look at the squad. Uh, the common denominator is a lot of the similar players that have been here through the last 10 years. Is he going to be able to get some of these players out? Are Ineos going to be cutthroat in getting rid of some of the players that have failed Manchester United over the last uh, few years? And that, I think, is probably what everyone's waiting to see. How much Ineos are going to invest? PSR, financial fair play, how much we can spend and it's a whole new Manchester United, it's, it's the start of a new era really. And I, I know he, he always seemed to be under pressure last year, had weekly problems to deal with, a horrendous injury list, how much pressure is he going to be under to make sure that, that you know, by Christmas it's got to be going well hasn't it? Well if Ineos are going to do what they say they are and take all of them outfield, off field pressures away from Ten Hag, new directors of football, a structure that United have never had at the football club. And I think Ineos probably wanted to look at Ten Hag under a new structure and see how he works. Obviously he's not signed his new contract yet so they're obviously ironing that out and what his powers will be but Ineos should be the ones dealing with, like we said before, the off field stuff and let Ten Hag concentrate on getting the best out of Manchester United. So. Really, Ten Hag is going to be judged this season more on what happens on the pitch because I think there was a lot of people using the off-field uh, problems for Ten Hag last season a bit of an excuse. So really, all eyes are on what happens on the pitch. And like you just said then, you cannot afford a poor start because the sooner you fall away, it's impossible to get back into it because, like we said, nobody's, nobody's standing still. Everybody's improving. We've got, we've got seven teams above us finished last season and we're all going to be looking to improve. New managers, new manager bounces, a lot of people trying to impress United can't afford to be slow off the mark. Certainly can't. It was a 31 point gap, sorry to remind you about that, <laughs> between United and the champions Manchester City last season. That gap simply has to close this time. 